Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. My brother's house got struck by lightning recently, and it just destroyed a ton of his electronics. That kind of experience can leave you feeling almost violated by nature. And it might make you wonder, why is lightning even a thing? Well, I'll tell you why. First, you need a storm cloud. Are you really going to start from the beginning? Well, of course I am. Where else would I start? Ugh. Where was I? Oh right, storm clouds. They're called cumulonimbus clouds, the bottom of which are a little over a mile off the ground. They look kind of like this. Inside the cloud, there's a bunch of little water drops and ice crystals zipping around. Because of the way water freezes and the low pressure up there, the crystals end up with some extra positive charge on the outside and some extra negative charge on the inside. Water is weird. Anyway, they're zipping around so close to each other that they start colliding and breaking apart. Boom! And now some of them aren't neutral, and the larger, heavier negative pieces fall to the bottom of the cloud. Now these clouds are huge, so that's a lot of charge. There's so much negative charge in the bottom of that cloud that it pushes away the electrons on the ground, leaving the ground positive, including all the cars and houses and people. A few seconds before the lightning strikes, all of your hair will actually stick up because all the strands of hair are pushing away from each other. If you're out in a storm and you feel this or you see this happen to someone else, you only have a few seconds, so here are your options. One, get inside a house or a car. The house is grounded, and in a car you're surrounded by metal. So either way, the lightning will go around you instead of through you. Wait, isn't it the rubber tires? No, it just jumped over a mile through the air. A couple feet of rubber does nothing. Two, if you can't get inside anything like that, your only option is to crouch. Curl up in a ball so that only your feet touch the ground, and make sure your two heels touch each other. That way you're as low as possible, so the lightning is less likely to hit you. Plus, if it passes through the ground under you, then it'll only go through your feet. Okay, now back to the lightning. The huge amount of charge gradually turns the air into a conductor. But the air's kind of stubborn, so what happens in these little patches. These patches form about 100 to 164 feet apart, with a voltage between them of about 100 to 150 million volts. Crazy voltages! When the chain of patches is long enough to bridge the gap, about 1 to 10 coulombs of charge jumps from the cloud to the ground in about a quarter of a second. That doesn't really come to 4 to 40 amps, though. The strike actually happens in bursts, or strokes, that last less than a millisecond. So each stroke can carry anywhere from 2,000 to 20,000 amps. Not that it matters anyway, I mean it only takes a fifth of an amp through your heart to kill you. You're dead either way. Lightning fun facts! Only about 10% of lightning is cloud to ground. The rest are mostly cloud to cloud. I mean they are closer together up there. There are about 40 strikes on the surface of the Earth. Every second! That's over a billion strikes a year! They're not evenly distributed though, the tropics get the brunt of those strikes. A strike can heat the surrounding air to up to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's five times the surface of the sun, which happens to be why lightning is bluish white. If you're like me though, you don't want to wait around for lightning to strike. You want to make it yourself. Mwah! 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 <coughs> so do you know anyone that's been struck by lightning? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.